Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would do a little sit down video where I'm going to be talking about some of the aspects of writing in another language. So some of you may know that English is not my first language. French is. Uh, that's my mother tongue and I learned English when I was quite young and then moved to England, I guess, seven years ago, something like that. I mean, I first moved to the UK seven years ago because I moved to Scotland for two years and then I moved to London afterwards. And I have been working in London actually for longer than that. So it has been longer <laughs> since I've moved to the UK. So it, it's been a long time for me and I'd say... I definitely consider myself to be completely bilingual at this point. However, there are still some words sometimes that I discover that are brand new. But most of the time it's because of English people specifically having very specific slang that no one else in the world understands. Like chinwag. What the fuck is chinwag? Anyway, I've been thinking about making this video for a little while, I guess almost as a cathartic thing for me. Just being able to talk through it and explain my point of view and how it feels like to write in another language than your mother tongue. Before doing a little bit of research for this video, I had no idea that there was an actual term for it, which is exophonic. So there's a list of exophonic writers on Wikipedia and it says here, i.e. those who write in a language not generally regarded as their first or mother tongue. <laughs> So I thought I would start a little bit by explaining what it is like for me, personally. I thought I would start by explaining how I became an exophonic writer. So for me, when I was a kid, I loved writing stories all the time. I would always try to write stories in French because that was my mother tongue and I did not speak another language well enough to write in that other language at the time. So I started off as writing in my own language. And I guess the first books that I read in English were technically the Harry Potter books, because when I was a kid, uh, everyone wanted to know what was going to happen in the next book. And we had to wait for the translated version in French. So I think it was around the fourth or the fifth book. I think it was maybe the fourth book that I started reading them in English. And it took me a really long time to get through one book, but still quicker than to wait for the translation in French. Therefore, I knew everything that was going to happen before anyone else in school. And considering that the fourth one was the first book where someone actually dies, it was pretty dramatic to know this kind of information before everyone else. So that's how I started reading in English, and I think that's where the appeal came for me. But when I first started to truly write and really try to write a full story in the most recent years, and that is not when I was a teenager and I would start something and it would last maybe like four pages and then I would give up and write something else. I did actually write a lot more than that, but I never ever managed to finish a story. But the first time that I actually did finish a story was way more recently. Um, and I wrote it in French. And I think essentially it had to be the story that I needed to get out of my system. It was very much a teenage girl discovering that she's truly a witch and she gets lessons by her mysterious aunts and stuff. Nothing very original, but I did write that one in French and I had to get it out of my system. I found it extremely hard and awkward and I realized it's also because in recent years I've pretty much stopped completely reading books in French. And actually, while I was re writing that story, I was also trying to read more books in French. And I had a couple from French authors who published more recently that I tried to read at the same time so that it would influence my writing and that it would help me become better. Because I know that like to write well, you have to read a lot. I think that's an essential part of, you know, the job. So I realized that my writing style probably suffered a lot from my lack of reading in my own language. And I was reading already a lot of books in English at that point in life. And that's when I decided after I finished that first book in French and I realized that it wasn't a good enough story that I wanted to actually revise it. Um, I decided to write my next one in English. I think now when I try to read books in French a lot of the time I actually cringe at them like I don't enjoy myself as much as I used to and a lot of the time I find the language is very purple prosy. I feel like writing and reading in French includes a lot more lyrical and literary types of elements that I don't actually enjoy all that much and I've learned to love a different type of language, a different use of the language. The English language to me feels a lot more direct and straightforward um, 
which might be strange, and I don't know whether it has any grounding into actual linguistics, probably not, but it just feels like, personally, I love action, and I read a lot of books that have action. I don't like psychological thrills, for instance. I don't read literary fiction. It's just not my type of books. Um, I write, I read a lot more urban fantasy, contemporary fantasy, thrillers, things that are action-packed and when where things are moving a lot. And I think that the English language is perfect for that kind of stuff. When I read in French, I feel like you have to do a lot more hoops to get to the same point. Overall, I just feel like the English language has a lot more versatility than my own original mother tongue. And a lot of people may disagree with me. And I'm just maybe not enough of a French reader that I don't know anymore what good prose sounds like in French and I'm just associating it with bad prose. Um, but when it comes to English, I just feel like to me that's the language that I truly want to write in. So now that I have become an exophonist writer, here's what it's like to write in a different language than your own. I think for me, a majority of that experience is unfortunately having constant imposter syndrome. Now, maybe it's justified, maybe not. I don't know about that. But the point is that writing in a different language than your mother tongue feels a lot like you're never good enough, at least to me. It's a constant fear that you're just never going to be as good a writer as someone else who's been living in that language their whole life and has had so much more time than you have had to practice writing in that language. Um, but it's also learning a lot along the way and noticing a huge difference from my very first draft, my very first page that I ever wrote fully in English to who I am now. And noticing that means that it, it helps a little bit curing that imposter syndrome and makes me feel better because sometimes I do realize, okay, I'm not as bad as I was then, therefore I must be somewhat good. And when I'm saying that, I don't mean it in a way that I'm constantly thinking of myself as a bad writer and that I'm looking at my writing style and thinking, wow, this is bad. It's more so that I don't know. It is just feeling like I don't have enough tools in my arsenal to truly know, have enough recoil to know whether I am a good writer or not. It's just like looking at my writing, one day feeling really confident about it and feeling like this is good writing, and the next day thinking, is it? Is it good writing? I don't even know. And feeling like you have to have constant reassurance from other people to the point where when I was finishing my first draft at some point, um, I asked a friend of mine to read the passage that I was the most proud of in my current novel. So there was one scene in particular that I really enjoyed writing, that I truly liked the result of, and I sent it to her. She works in the editorial business, and I was like, can you just tell me if it's good? Like, just tell me should I give up on this dream? <laughs> because I don't know whether this dream is valid anymore or not, whether I should stop pursuing it, because there is no chance I will ever be good enough to make it into publishing, whether traditionally or self-published. Um, but that is a fear that is constant, and that comes back every now and then, even if my friend did tell me, yeah, it was good, and she told me what I was good at, and I agree, I'm good at pacing. I don't think I'm good at literary prose, but I'm good at pacing. And I guess this leads to a lot of comparisons, like you can't help yourself but compare yourself to others and think, wow, this other person also writes in another language than their own and they're so much better than me, should I not be at that level yet? So I feel like by explaining to you guys how I decided to write in English, I've told you the benefits of it and why, which are all positives to me, but I've also now explained to you the negatives of it and why sometimes it feels like it's a bad idea. Would I just be a much, much better writer if I were to write in my own mother tongue? Am I missing out on that chance? Should I give it another go? And sometimes I do go back and forth between the two ideas and I think, oh, maybe I should try to write another manuscript in French. But I think that just because I'm currently writing in English doesn't mean that I should never be able to go back to writing in French. It could happen again one day, and I don't think that I'm completely closing that door for me. It's just something that is not where I am at right now. So when I was thinking about doing this video, I wanted to know what it was like for other people, because obviously not everyone has the exact same experience as me, and I wanted to know 
um, whether other people felt a different way than me or if we were all kind of aligned in our experience of it. And so I asked on this Discord group that I'm a part of, it's basically a writer's group, and we're all doing together January Remo, which is like an unsanctioned version of Nano Remo, but in the month of January. And uh, a few of the people on that group are actually also exophonic writers. And so I asked people who were to just send me a small paragraph about the experience. No pressure, no like, no parameters about it. Just tell me what it's like for you and nothing else. So I got an answer from Kat Wolfie who said, for me, it's been mostly English. I'm Swedish for reference, since I want to expand my English vocabulary as well, as try to keep the English that I've learned over the years fresh in mind. I also prefer to write in English because I feel like writing in Swedish is a bit draining and doesn't sound as nice compared to English, especially romance books in Swedish. They are a pain to write when the characters flirt. That made me laugh. And Swedish can sometimes also sound so bad in some sentences that it weirds me out. That's at least my take on it. What's funny is that I immediately related to that. It reflected a lot of what I thought of writing in French and the way that I thought of sometimes writing certain sentences in French as cringe. Like, it just feels cringy to me. Perhaps for different reasons. I think for me, French just sounds too flourished and too purple prosy in a lot of ways when it's absolutely unnecessary and just doesn't fit the literary genre. For instance, I'm just not a fan of action scenes in French. But here it seems like she's saying Swedish sounds bad in romance books in particular, and especially when it comes to characters flirting, which is very interesting to know that other people feel that way, but about a different language. Then I got an answer from Azu who said, my first language is Spanish and I'm trying to write in English to expand my reach. I'm not confident yet. Like I can talk with someone in English for chat, but I don't feel courageous enough to literally write directly in English instead of writing in Spanish and translating it. Which I thought was interesting because I've never tried that method for writing. And I think it's really a fun idea to be like, I'm gonna first write my sentences in my own mother tongue and then translate it. And I guess probably polish it and go over it to make sure that the sentences make sense. Um, it's very interesting because I wouldn't be able to do that, I think, because even just now, I tried to do the opposite. I tried to translate the first sentence of my novel from English to French, and I was having trouble with it because I was trying to translate it too literally rather than get the true meaning of the sentence behind and make a new sentence. So it's very interesting that this is working for Azu, and I find that fascinating. It's a fascinating process. I'm wondering if it's not really tiring though and whether at some point just launching yourself into directly writing in English would be easier. I do think everyone has to experiment at first and I think for me my experimentation phase was writing a little bit of fan fictions in English because there was a certain type of fan fiction going around on like Tumblr or something and I never actually published anything or posted any of it. It was just for me personally that I was trying it and just didn't share it. But my first dipping my toes into writing in English were basically fan fictions that I wrote for myself and there was a style of fanfiction that was very much no descriptions, no paragraphs of plot. It was literally just dialogue. And like you had a little paragraph. It was written almost like, like a play or like a movie script. So I feel like everyone has their own thing that they do at first before they launch themselves into it. Um, then I had Swifty who wrote... In my experience, writing in English is much more fun than writing in Norwegian, which is my first language. I think it is a better story language, but there are some harder things with it. There are some holes in my vocabulary and some grammar things aren't as nailed down as people who have it as their first language would have. And exactly, that's exactly how I felt as well. How I feel like sometimes am I at a disadvantage compared to people whose first language is English? Um, but I think it's also a question of confidence and it's just sometimes me putting myself down when there's no reason for it. I'm able, I just need to believe in it. <laughs> but I think Swifty put it in a really interesting way and I completely agree. Um, the sentence, I think it is a better story language nailed it. That's exactly how I feel about English and why I want to write in English. To me, I love French as a spoken language and a lot of the times I miss speaking it and when I speak to my family or French speaking friends, it is such a nice thing to be able to do and I'm just reminded of all the things I like about the French language. But when I read, I feel like a better story language is English. Then I had Flora and the phone who wrote this. 
I feel a creative freedom that comes with exploring a language that's not my first. I feel free to play with grammar and make up compound words that won't, that don't exist in English. I feel free to sound a bit off. That's really interesting. I never even thought about it that way, but it is true that sometimes I'm trying to convey something and I'm like, surely this must be an idiom. This must be an expression or a metaphor that exists that other people have used. And sometimes I just don't find it exactly how I'm looking for it on the internet. And I'm like, am I making this up? Am I inventing something here? Should I keep it or should I leave it? <laughs> so it is interesting to see it that way. I think this playfulness partly stems from not having the same associations with English words as I would have with the German counterpart, or as a person whose first language is English might have. For some words in English, I still get to decide how I want to feel and think about them because I just encountered them, and that's fun. Again, this is a, such a fresh take on it, I love this. Um, then she says, at the same time, I know that writing in English is sometimes the easy way out. On one hand, things just sound less cringy to me. Again, exact same thought. Since there is still an added layer of distance with English, even though I am pretty sure that they are actually just as cringy, just not to my ear. On the other hand, I think that it's easier to not be completely honest with myself and in my writing when I'm not writing in my first language. For me anyways, some things are harder to say in German because they feel more intense, closer to home. I love writing in English, but I also really love writing in German, especially and mostly poetry. There is such intimacy and daring in writing poetry in my first language that I do try and expose myself to that at times. Also, German allows for the best word plays ever. This is such a fun answer because it told me so many new things that I hadn't been thinking about whatsoever. As much as I also loved getting relatable answers that I was like, yeah, exactly how I feel. And that was such a nice feeling. I also really enjoyed reading this answer because uh, she put into words a lot of things that I think were somewhere in me. I just hadn't known they were there. Like, for instance, the part where she says there is an added layer of distance with English and that it's easier to not be completely honest with myself in my writing when I'm not writing in my first language and that writing in her first language, German, makes it feel more intense and closer to home. That's fascinating. I would never have thought of that. And I think it's completely true. And in a way, it tracks again with a lot of my own experience because because when I first started writing seriously, and when I say seriously, I mean in the sense that I actually wrote a full manuscript, even if it was the first draft and I dropped it. When I did it in French, I think it was a story that I needed to get out. It was a lot closer to home and it was cathartic. It was a cathartic experience because I started writing it at my lowest point in terms of my mental health. I was uh, working in a company that I was just really, really unhappy in. And I think I spent like a good amount of time crying every single day when I was there towards the end, especially. And that's when I started writing again, truly writing again. It was an escapism and it felt so good to have that form of escapism. So to me, it was definitely a very personal and intimate experience. And when I started writing in English, I agree that it adds a layer of distance and that things sound less less cringy because they're not as personal to me and also I get to be a little bit more daring with the language. And then Stieg, whose first language is also Norwegian, wrote this. One of my biggest issues with writing a book in my second language is how my second language bleeds into everything else in my life. My personal notes suddenly were written in English. My bullet journal suddenly was written in English. I started struggling with writing Norwegian emails at work because my brain was so tuned into English. It doesn't help that one of my other major hobbies, gaming, is also mostly execu executed in English. At the end, it was like I was having a minor identity crisis, which sounds lame, I know, but in 2022, I've made contact conscious decisions to improve on my first language. I started bullet journaling in my first language and I generally try to keep everything non-writing related in my first language. And again, it was another one of those answers that I felt so relatable because um, exactly the same, but not just from writing, but also from living for me in a country that is in a different language, that uses a different language, um, living with a partner who speaks a different language and working in an environment where it's in English as well. I absolutely understand the answer because um, after a while, people are like, oh my God, your English much, must be so much improved now that you've been living in the UK for this long. And you're like, do you know what? 
It probably is, but it feels like I'm, instead of learning a new language, I'm losing my own. I get it. Like, it's true. You kind of lose a little bit of your own language. And it's just because your your thinking is different. And I think the identity crisis thing is absolutely not lame. It's extremely true and actually has been proven that when you learn to think in a different language, you are rejigging your brain. So absolutely, again, very relatable. It's really interesting to get all those answers from all those other people who have had the same experience, but with different languages. I felt like originally I was going to talk a lot about how it's imposter syndrome, I feel like I'm never going to be enough of a good writer, I feel like am I ever going to match the writing style of someone whose first language is English, all of those things that felt a little bit negative and I didn't feel like it was a very hopeful ending to this video. And then I realized I didn't even talk about successful writers. Can I succeed as a writer if I'm writing in a different language than my first language? Yes, of course I can, because others have done it before me. So I thought I would talk a little bit about this list of exophonic writers that is on Wikipedia over there. And there's a lot of names there, but I'm just going to go over the ones that I knew. When I read them, I was like, I know this person, I've heard of this guy before, which isn't that many because my general culture is not that great. But <laughs> I do know Samuel Beckett. Everyone has heard of Samuel Beckett, I believe. Samuel Barclay Beckett was an Irish novelist, playwright, short story writer, theatre director, poet and literary translator. A resident of Paris for most of his adult life, he wrote in both French and English. And he wrote En Attendant Godot. And you may be like, what the fuck is that? It is Waiting for Godot. He wrote it in French. Even though his first language was English, he wrote that play in French and it became ultra uber famous. Like, come on. If that's not success, I don't know what is. Then we have Kazuo Ishiguro, who I think a lot of people have heard of. Uh, he is a British novelist, screenwriter, musician and short story writer. He was born in Nagasaki, Japan and moved to Britain in 1960 with his parents when he was five. Graduate of the University of East Anglia, Ishiguro is one of the most celebrated contemporary fiction authors writing in English. Um, he was nominated for the Man Booker Prize four times, winning the prize in 1989 for his novel The Remains of the Day, which was adapted into a film of the same name. Which I guess he did move to England when he was five, which is a really early age and enough to completely integrate a new language and to feel like you're completely fluent in that language by the time you're in your teens. Absolutely. But he still counts as an exophonic writer and I'm still putting him on the list because he is that successful that I'm like, damn, look at him, another one. And then there's Jack Kerouac, who I had no clue was originally of French-Canadian ancestry and his real name was Jean-Louis Lebris de Kerouac, which sounds extremely French, and was anglicized to Jack Kerouac. So he was raised in a French-speaking home in Massachusetts. Kerouac learned English at age six and spoke with a marked accent into his late teens. His first published book was The Town and the City and he achieved widespread fame and notoriety with his second, on the road in 1957. It made him a beat icon who published 12 more novels during his life and numerous poetry volumes. Kerouac is recognized for his style and spontaneous prose. He has a lasting legacy. Do you hear that? A lasting legacy. Greatly influencing many of the cultural icons of the 1960s. Anyway, another person whose first language was not English and wrote to the point of, everyone knows this guy's name, everyone knows on the road. I didn't read it, I don't really care for that kind of stuff, but I know of it because it's a work that has been that influential. So again, success. And then we have another name that I'm sure you'll recognize, Vladimir Nabokov, who wrote Lolita. He was a Russian-American novelist, poet, translator, and entomologist. Born in Russia, he wrote his first nine novels in Russian while living in Berlin. He achieved international acclaim and prominence after moving to the United States and beginning to write in English. That's so cool that basically he only started finding fame after he changed language and decided to write in English instead, instead of in Russian. Okay, so the last name that I saw on the list that was like, everyone knows this name, is Voltaire, French philosopher 
who also wrote and published in English, which I had no idea he did that. But basically, I think he was imprisoned in the Bastille at some point, And he asked the French government to exile him in England instead. And they accepted. So I think he lived in England for a while and just got really interested in English literature while he was there. So this kind of stems from that. I'm going to stop here on the examples of exophonic writers, but I just thought that was such an interesting concept that I hadn't even thought of the idea of looking up names of people who are successful writers in another language than their own mother tongue. And it's so cool to see so many really famous examples. So since I wanted to finish on a hopeful note and not just for other people, because I know that I've now talked about exophonic writers who are all very famous names and very successful writers, and it was really interesting to learn about that. Um, I also want to point out that you can always improve and that's what I should be telling myself. I can always improve. There is a lot of room for improvements and also a lot of things that I could be doing to achieve those improvements. So while I was preparing this video and thinking about what I wanted to say in this video, I realized that I was pinpointing what I thought were my weaknesses in my writing style. I do think I have strength as well, by the way. I don't think of myself as just a bad writer. Uh, I think I do pace really well. And actually everything I was saying about action scenes, those are my favorite to write because I think I write those well. I am good with pace and I think that's my type of writing. It's what I do well. What I don't do as well, as I was explaining earlier, is definitely better, more flourished descriptions, a little bit more of literary prose and lyrical um, prose. So, so thinking about it in that way, about it not being a weakness that I can't do anything about, but instead something that I have now pinpointed as one of the things that I should be improving upon, I can improve upon it. And I think a way that I am already trying to improve upon it is uh, by trying to read more like a writer. A lot of the time when I read a book that I find really well written, I try to figure out exactly what it is I find well written, write down some vocabulary words or sentences that I have found very interesting and that um, have made me think this is well written. Uh, try and take notes of things, basically, is the way that you read as a writer. But also I have actually bought The Anatomy of Prose by Sasha. Black and that's a great book to start with but also the emotion thesaurus because I think that one will teach me a lot of vocabulary words that I don't know about for talking about emotions and finally the thing that I want to be doing which actually is going to be for next month in February I really want to try and do a little bit of a flash fiction February and it was after watching one of the videos by one of the people uh, on that Discord writers group, uh, Violet, who made a video about writing something every single day. And I think for her, it was mostly poetry and things like that. I really want to try and do this with little bits of very literary prose type of fiction. Do flash fiction, but in a way that forces me to enhance the way that I describe things. So mostly it's going to be description flash fiction. I'm not sure if that's a thing, but I'm going to make it a thing. So I'm going to try and do this in the month of February just to practice and make myself a better writer. I think I'm going to end the video on this note and I hope that you enjoyed learning the word exophonic with me because I certainly hadn't heard of it before even though that's what I am. If you did enjoy this video please leave a like, uh, definitely leave a comment down below because I always try to respond to those. Consider subscribing, ring that bell, all that jazz and I will see you guys in the next one.